So coming to this uh, Ashtavakra Geet Samhita, Ashtavakra Samhita is very, very uh, difficult, you know, it's a very, uh, very uh, tough uh, spiritual text because it is one of the great, you know, it is uh, one of the greatest uh, spiritual texts of all texts. You know, the, the, uh, the subject which has been uh, discussed in Ashtavakra Gita is not only Advaita Vedanta. You know, in Advaita Vedanta also, there are different parts and the greatest and the highest part of Advaita Vedanta is the doctrine of birthlessness, which is called Ajatavad. That is the doctrine of birthlessness where it says that the world was never created. You know, there is no creation. It's only Brahman, that's all. There is no two. There, there has never been any two. It is always the same Brahman. It is always the one Brahman, which is the only existence. There is no two existence. And there is no Maya even. There is only one. And this is called the doctrine of birthlessness or Ajatavad. So Ashtavagra Gita is, uh, you know, Ashtavagra Samhita, as it says, is based on this uh, birthlessness, you know, the doctrine of birthlessness, Ajatavad. We have completed eight chapters. These eight chapters we have discussed thoroughly. You know, we have approached these chapters slowly and we have discussed thoroughly. And when we were uh, doing these sessions, I was very happy to see that many of us could uh, uh, could get the glimpse of the essence of Ashtavakra Gita. You know, we could feel a lot of things. But now we are going to the ninth chapter, which talks about detachment. So from now on, the whole, you know, text of Ashtavakra Gita will become a little technical. It will become, you know, uh, it will become technical. So we need to discuss a lot about what has been said, what has been, you know, communicated. Uh, uh, now, you know, it's a, it's a dialogue, as we know that it's a dialogue between Janaka and Ashtavakra. So, uh, at one time, uh, Janaka is asking Ashtavakra, and then Ashtavakra is, is, is responding, and Janaka also is saying something about his realization, and then uh, Ashtavakra is, you know, is taking his disciple, who is already realized the self, who has already realized the self, because this is the only spiritual text in the world which starts after the realization of the disciple. Any other spiritual text, you know, it starts with the commencement of spiritual journey of the disciple and it ends or concludes the, at a point where the disciple has, has realized the self, realized the truth. But Ashtavakra Gita is the only text in the world which starts after the realization of uh, of the disciple. That is, Janaka has already already realized the self, and after that, when he you know when he elaborates about his experiences of the self, Ashtavakra takes him to the higher level of consciousness, higher level of consciousness. Because whenever we you know whenever we uh, we realize something that, you know, in that realization, we don't, re we don't, uh, you know, we are not aware that in that realization also, when we try to, you know, when we try to elaborate it, when we try to express it, we, you know, uh, unconsciously, the mind stuff, the mind or the matter, you know, mind is a matter. So the mind or the matter or that which is not knowledge, that is ignorance, that ignorance also gets mixed within that. So any realization which we talk about is actually not knowledge. It is a mixture of knowledge and ignorance because, you know, the knowledge which is pure knowledge cannot be expressed. Because when there is only pure knowledge, there is no knower and there is nothing to be known. It is only the knowledge which exists and that is called oneness. That is Advaita, that is non-dual, there is no two. So no two means no two existence. So when there is a knower 
and when there is something to be known and when there is this knowledge which connects between the knower and the known then we are in the realm of duality we have not reached the state of non duality when we reach the state of non duality there is only this knowledge which resides which is there which exists there is no knower there is no known because this knower and the known mingles within knowledge so there is this existence of only one entity and because there is the existence of only one entity because there is no knower and because there is nothing to be known so there is no knowledge also there is you know th you know there is no knowledge because you go beyond that knowledge you go beyond that knowledge you you go beyond this knowing or not knowing and because of this there is no expression you cannot express so till you are expressing something till you are able to express something elaborate something that means that you are you are in the uh, you know in the area of duality and when you are in the area of duality you know there is ignorance there is that is not pure knowledge that is not pure consciousness and because that is not pure consciousness that is you know this realization also is not true so you know when you reach that state when there is nobody to explain anything nobody to know anything nobody who has this you know is this this quest of of knowledge when there is no quest of knowledge when there is nobody to be to know when there is nothing to be known when there is nothing to be unknown even that state is the state of non duality or advaita and that is where you know that is the goal of our life and that is where ashtavakra is trying to take janak so from now on you know we are going to we are going to talk about detachment because if you remember the three questions that ashtavakra uh, that janak had asked at the very beginning of the text of ashtavakra gita was this that katham gyanam abapnoti how can i know this knowledge what is the way by which i can i can you know realize this knowledge this is the first question the second question is katham muktir bhavishyati and how can the liberation happen to me now what is called liberation liberation means you know freedom freedom from what freedom from ignorance freedom from ignorance ignorance of what ignorance of my own nature ignorance about my own self ignorance about my own existence when i am ignorant about my own existence that is called you know that is that is called uh, ignorance and when i i am aware about my own existence when i know who i am that is called knowledge so when we talk about liberation we are actually talking about liberation from ignorance so when there is a liberation from ignorance that is you know complete you know attaining complete knowledge so liberation means attaining complete knowledge attaining pure knowledge attaining total knowledge total knowledge supreme knowledge supreme knowledge that is called liberation so these were the two questions the first one was katham gyanam abapnoti how can i know this truth and katham muktir bhavishyati and how can this liberation happen both are the same thing now these two are the you know goal of our life why are we born why are we born into this world we are born in, into this world because of ignorance because we think that we are the body because we have this conception that we are the body we have this conception that we are the mind so everything associated with body and mind they are so truth they are so true to us that you know it we are bound to you know come to this world again because we think that this is the truth and it is only 
you know by birth into this into this you know uh, into the sensory world this world is the sensory world where everything is perceived through senses and because of this this is a sensory world so we you know we take birth because of ignorance and we think that you know all our desires all the all the things that is within our mind they can only be fulfilled when we have a body and because of this you know because of this we are born so our you know our uh, our cause of birth is ignorance so because of ignorance we are born but you know as we you know as we keep coming and going from this world at one time we have this question within us what is the truth is this the only truth that you know i am coming to this world i am spending some time here i am attaining something and then i am and i am leaving everything and going back again i am i am coming again i am you know spending a whole life and i am working i am i am i am doing a lot of hard work and at at one point i have to leave everything without you know taking anything from here so you know in uh, i have to leave empty handed so so you know at one point we have this question what is the truth when we have this question then you know the quest for knowledge starts and when we attain this knowledge then we know that we are not the body we are not the mind we are not the intellect we are not the ego we are not the mind stuff then who we are we are beyond all this we are beyond the body we are beyond the mind we are beyond the intellect we are beyond the ego we are beyond mind stuff we are beyond everything which can be perceived we are beyond everything which cannot be perceived we are beyond everything which can be imagined and we are beyond everything which cannot be imagined so what is that that is the self that is consciousness so when i have the glimpse of that consciousness when i have the realization of the consciousness that is the time when i become liberated i become liberated i become liberated from ignorance and once i become liberated from ignorance i have served my you know my purpose of life and because i have served my purpose of life i don't come back again because i have understood that this whole thing is not real it is not true the only truth is the self consciousness atman or brahman and i go and get mingled in that brahman so these are the two questions that he asked how can i attain self knowledge and how can i attain liberation but then he asked another one another thing after this two nothing remains but then he asked that vairagya me kim kim prapnu me tad how can i attain detachment how can i attain you know renunciation here renunciation means dispassion here renunciation means non attachment here renunciation means detachment so how can i attain detachment now there is you know we are all surprised that after after self knowledge and after liberation how does this question come of this uh, you know of un attachment or detachment you know it's very technical because you know when you attain this knowledge when you attain this knowledge the only thing which will help you to bind with this knowledge the only thing which can help you to you know stay firm in this knowledge is detachment detachment from this body detachment from this you know from this mind detachment from from the thoughts detachment from the ego detachment from your senses so when you can you know when you can stay detached you know detached from your mind from your body from your senses then you you know you are able to 
remain as pure consciousness even in your lifetime. So this is the most important thing, detachment. So today we are going to talk about detachment because the subject is very, very, you know, technical. So we'll start slowly and we'll go into the details. If at any point you have any question, please feel free to ask that. So we are starting the chapter number nine, that is detachment. Ashtavakra Ubacha. Ashtavakra is saying, Krita Krite Cha Dandani Kada Shantani Kasyava. It's very important. He says, Krita Krite Cha Dandani Kada Shantani Kasyava. Krita Krita means, Krita means something which has to be done. That is your duties. Your duties, your works, your works, your, you know, prescribed works, all the works that you need to do to keep your life, you know, in, a, in order, to keep your life in discipline, to keep a serene life, anything which you need to do is called krita, that is your duties. And akrita, that is those which are not your duties, those works which you should not do. So, you know, these two things, what has to be done and what has not to be done. Krita Krite Cha Dandani, Danda. Danda means the opposite. That is, you know, we have a mind. So when we see our mind, we see that there is always, you know, this set of opposites which runs. The mind is a set of opposite. It says, it says Sankalpa and Vikalpa. Sankalpa means something which we decide. Like I decide to go to the market. Now, you know, the first thought comes that I need to go to the market. And, you know, the moment this, this thought will come, another second thought will come, just the opposite of that. No, I don't, I don't need to go there. You know, so always in our, you know, day-to-day -day life, in our routine life, we deal with these two set of contradictions, set of opposites. One is sankalpa and the other is bikalpa. That is something which has to be done and something which we, you know, which we don't want to do. Yes and no. Yes and no. This. Ifs and buts. Ifs and buts. You know, our our life is, you know, is, is, is just, you know, swinging like a pendulum. Our life is swinging like a pendulum and the two extremes of this pendulum is this two. Yes and no. I need to do this. No, I will not do this. I will not do this. Yes, I will do this. This, you know. So these are the two things which always rotates. And this is the duality, actually. This is the duality. You know, this duality which we talk about is not in the world. The duality is in the mind. So the person who can get rid of this duality within his mind... A person who can get rid of this duality, you know, this, this opposites, the set of opposites, one who can get rid of this, he can get rid of duality. So here it says, Krita Krite Chatandani Kada Santani Kashyaba. When these, when these, you know, this idea of doing or not doing, of idea of, you know, opposites, when these are going to stop, when these are going to stop, you know, and, and Kasyava, and whose are these contradictions? Who is the one who is facing these con contradictions? I see that it's me who is facing the con contradiction, contradictions. I, I see that it's me who is always, you know, seeing these two extremes. I'm dwelling in this, in this duality. So I think that I am dealing with this duality. Now he says, Kasyava. Do you actually know the person who is dealing with this duality? You think that it's you? Did you ever search whether it's you or not? As you dwell into this, as you dwell into this, you will see that it's not you who is, you know, who is dealing with this duality. You are the observer you're the observer who is only, you know, witnessing this, comp in this total, 
you know, you are the observer who is witnessing this total, you know, this total, uh, total phenomena. It's a phenomena which is happening in front of your eyes and you are the observer. You are just observing. You are not dealing with this. You know, it is the nature. It is the nature. It is the mind which is dwelling this, but you are not the mind. You are the observer of the mind. You are the observer of the mind. You are not the mind. As you see it very closely, you will see that you are not the mind. You are not the intellect. You are not the body. You are not the ego. Ego means a person who says, I do this. I am doing this. I am the doer. I am the doer. This is the ego. You know, this the sense of doership. The sense of doership that we have within us is called ego or ahankar. That is, you know, I am doing this. I am I'm, I'm the doer. But I am not the doer actually. I am not the doer. I am the witness of all the actions which are happening through this body and mind. I am the witness of all the phenomena which is happening through the body and mind. I am just the observer. I am doing nothing. But because of my ignorance, I get attached with these. I get attached to this, you know, this mind. I get attached to this set of contradictions, set of opposites. I get attached to, you know, this do's and not or don'ts, duties and non-duties. I get attached to all this because I am not aware about my own existence. Because I am not aware about my own, my real nature. That is why I get attached to these, and that is why. Detachment is, you know, must. Practice of detachment is must. So it, it says, you know, the only way to practice detachment is to find out whose are these, you know, whose are these duties? Who is doing these duties? And who is the one who says that this is not my duty? Who is this person? You will see, it's not you. You think that it's you. But as you see it deeply, you know, from a very closely, you see, these are not you. You are the observer. You are doing nothing. You don't have any duties. You don't have any work. You don't do anything. You don't do anything. You are effortless. You are effortless. You are always the same. You are always the same. You are the calm and serene one. Still. Still. You don't move at all. You don't move, you don't change, you don't mutate, you don't mutate, you don't go anywhere. You are still, you are always the same, you are always the same. So, you know, as you recognize your own self, as you recognize your real nature, that is the only way to practice detachment. You know, any kind of detachment which we practice from the external you know, point of view from the from the surface is not actually detachment. That is not detachment. The detachment starts with the the recognition. The detachment starts with this identification of yourself. You know, the moment you can identify yourself, this is me. This is me. Then you see that you are already detached. You have never been associated with anything in this world. You have never been associated with your, your body. You know, you stay inside the body, but you are never associated with anything, any development in this, in this body. The, the developments of this body is happening according to the law of nature. It is the nature which is, you know, bringing the changes. It is the nature which is bringing the changes within the body. We see... You know, the body is, is born and then it, it slowly, slowly grows and it, you know, at one time it becomes old and then it, you know, it, it decays and it dies. So this whole process, you know, we think that it is we who is undergoing the journey. But when we, you know, when we see ourselves, when we see ourselves, when we start to recognize ourselves, when we start to, you know, feel ourselves, realize ourselves, we see that we have done nothing. 
the whole process is happening according to its own laws its own laws the laws of nature i am not the nature i am beyond the nature i am the witness of this nature i am not the part of this nature i am not born from the nature the nature is born from me i am not born from this nature the nature is born from me and the nature is going to dissolve within me i am always the witness of this nature so it says that krita krite chatandani kada santani kasyava you know all this you know the things that we we talk about life the thing that we talk about life all this when are they going to calm down when are they going to cease when are this when when this fire is going to extinguish and whose is this fire this is what you need to recognize you need to know evam gatvaiva nirveda nirveda bhava tyaga paro abrati he says this is the only thing that you need to know that whose is this duty and who is doing this duty who is this one who is you know going through this opposites who is dwelling with this opposites of this of this world of this life who is the one who is dealing with the opposites of this life who is the one who is dealing with the duties and non duties the karmas and the akarmas the you know the, the the actions and the inactions who is the one who is dealing with this and when these actions are going to cease and whose you know who you know to whom these actions belong this is the only thing that you need to know evam gatvaiva you know the moment you know this then only what happen nirvedat bhava then only you become desireless passionate less dispassionate the only way to to become dispassionate the only way to become desireless to only way to become indifferent indifferent you know we we all want to become indifferent we all want to become desireless unattached because that is the only way by which we can do all our spiritual practice so how can i how can we become desireless the only way is to recognize who i am that is the only way by which i can become indifferent i can become desireless so it says evam gatvaiva nirveda nirveda bhava that is that is uh, that is the only way that is the only way by knowing the the knowing the truth the knowing who you are that is the only way by which you can become you know desireless and then tyaga paro tyaga paro and that is you know that is the only way to 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 for renunciation the only way for renunciation is to know who i am and abrati that is not not getting engaged in any action by knowing this by knowing this that this actions doesn't belong to me by knowing that the, these duties does not belong to me by knowing this this body or the mind does not belong to me i am always the witness then you become abrati then then you become you know completely actionless that is how to become actionless the only way to become actionless is you know to perform actions but not getting attached to those actions when we perform actions we become attached to the actions we become attached to the you know to the results of the actions and we also become attached to the you know the the one who is performing the actions so the this you know attachment happens in three forms first of all you know we get attached to the actions we get attached to the karmas itself all the actions that we perform we get attached to those then you know the one who is who is performing the action we get attached to that we we think that it is we it is us who is performing these actions and because we think that it is us who is performing these actions we become attached to that ego and then 
you know the results each actions produce results so we become you know we become completely attached to the results of the actions so here it says abrati that is you need to not perform any action you need to not get engage in any action so how is it possible how is it possible that i need to work but i will not get attached to any work so how it is possible it is only possible when i can you know remove the attachment the first thing that we need to do is you know that is what has been said in the bhagavad gita about karma yoga the first thing that you need to do is to remove the attachment from the results of the action karmanne va dhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana you know the only thing that you need to do is to perform your actions but don't get attached to the results of your action so this is the first you know this is the first step the first step of inaction the first step of detachment is to get rid of the attachment towards the, towards the you know the attachment with the results of the action when i become unattached to the results of the action then i see that i have become unattached from the actions when i become unattached from the actions and the results of actions then i see that i have become unattached from the doer from the one who is performing the actions that means i am completely free from all attachment the moment i become free from all attachments while performing actions then i see that there is nothing in this world which can cause any attachment for me i am free from every attachment every possible attachment and when i am free from every possible attachment then i can feel who i am living in this body leading this very practical life leading this very practical normal life i can feel that i am the self i am the self so today we stop here you know we have just discussed the only the, uh, just one shloka and then you know the next day we will start from the second one